Okay. Let's see. It's. I guess we're live here. Just wait till the uh, thing comes up. All right. Okay. Can everybody, everybody hear us? Okay. I hope so. Just give it a couple minutes here. Just um, people can kind of tune in and whatever. Hi to everybody. Hello. Yeah, we'll, we'll pray for you, Carl. Seeing your comment there about some anxiety things there, definitely we'll pray for you on that. All right. I guess we'll get started here. Um, we're going to be talking today about this book right here, the Romans 10 Controversy by Jacob M. Thompson, who is joining me. And uh, so I guess we're going to start out with just um, discussing what was it, what, what was it that uh, inspired you to write this book? Well, um, mainly, you know, Again, come from all the contentions on YouTube, YouTube about this whole non-prayer thing um, that's been going around. Um, it just, well, frankly, let's be real. It's that's just stupid, you know, um, that whole movement. And so, mainly, what I was going to do was just going to have a like a a quick book, okay, answering all the arguments to the these non-prayer for salvation people, and then throwing a couple other things like from from like the lordship side of things where you have to like you know continually confess all your sins to be saved. That was kind of the the basic premise of it but as i started writing it um being that it's romans 10 it's uh it's one of the greatest chapters on gentile salvation how to be saved today the lord kind of put me in the direction to make it more about salvation and so um to those who read the book it's um it's more about salvation than anything else now that being said i mean i do state in the introduction it's you know about salvation and prayer's proper place because i do answer the prayer stuff because again being romans 10 and and the times we live in <laughs> You have to answer all the weird little accusations about it. Um, so in this book, you know, I try to cover just the main things that you will come across. Not everything, because I mean, um, because some of the things are just like really, really obscure um, that you're not going to encounter too much. But I wanted to get the general premise of okay, what is salvation, and what is and what it's not. And so that's really why I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of weird because you know I, I know you were saying different people you talk to in person and you try to explain some of these different weird aberrant views of prayers of work or you know yeah. even lordship salvation type of stuff and a lot of people just kind of th they look at you really people you know say yeah. that people believe that you know <laughs> I I cannot tell how many times that happened like when I was like talking to people because I go out and you know hey you want like purchase a copy of the book or something or you're in your hand out to friends and family and I would discuss some of the things that are in there. And I'd say, yeah, there's these people too, like they're saying you don't pray, you don't ask God to save you. And and on cue, they all had that same look. They like they all did it. They go like that, you know. And it just it, and it confirmed to me more just how weird that view is and just how minuscule it really is. Um, of course, you know, we'll discuss some of that here today, but I mean it's just it's and I mean there, there's some weird stuff and some people are just so like, wait, what people teach that, you know, you know, you know, I'm not even saying those people are saved, but even they know that don't make sense, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so like I yeah. said, I want to try to address some of that stuff. And again, like it's Romans 10 and with the whole prayer thing, you, you, you have to. And, and like I said, we'll discuss in this, in this stream, but with the whole no prayer thing, you have to answer all their little thingies. Cause if you don't, they come back with, with the next one. And so that's, so that's why I did a lot of that stuff there too. Yeah. Well, I think you really covered the arguments well in the book. You know, I read through the whole thing and it's it's like I told you, it's it's a really good, very well written book. And I recommend this book to anybody out there that's watching this. Um, it just <laughs> like you said, you know, you, if you don't cover this stuff, then people might encounter it, you know. And, but it just it really salvation is a common sense thing. It is very simple. It's not yeah. that difficult. You know, exactly. God is the author. And of salvation uh, you got to talk to him you know that's what romans 10 is all about exactly well and i even discussed that <laughs> and like i said we'll, we'll get there eventually 
or you know, however, you know, whatever, how we want to discuss it. But that's the whole thing. God's called you to salvation. He calls you first. We don't do that on our own. You know, we're we're so depraved. We don't we don't even give a thought about it. He's the one that comes and tries to connect with us he, and build that relationship already. Problem is we keep denying, and so you have to then call him back. You know, when you actually want to have that real relationship. You know, and like I said, we'll discuss more of that in the book. But yeah, I mean, it's just. I guess, and, and I wanted to have a book too, you know, to kind of you know piggyback what I was saying earlier too. Just a book that just, just kind of spells it out, just simply as you possibly can, you know. Because there's a lot of, you know, I mean, again, there, you know, there's some good gospel tracks out there, I, I, which I recommend. They they explain salvation just fine. But I wanted to have a book too that actually kind of says it. Like, you know, I, I got other books. I got one by you know by uh, what's his, uh, you know, Peter S. Ruckman. And he's got a book called called The Simplicity of Salvation, and you know, and it's got some good things in there. But that's not really a good like. He doesn't really show you how simple it is. I mean, I mean, you know, he does by giving you different examples, but it doesn't really, like, here's salvation, what it's not, this, this, this. And I wanted to show a book to people because, again, so many, so many people have so many misconceptions because when you say the basic plan of salvation, which which I lay out in my book, is just A, B, C, admit, believe, confess, because that really is what salvation is. It's so simple because mm -hmm. maybe their wickedness, we make it harder. When you preach this, the basic gospel, people didn't take that, and then they – because they've heard so many different things, they think, oh, you he means this, or they mean that, or then I want to have a book that's look, no, it's not this, 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 this. Here is that simple, here it is, laid out just plain as day. And that's why I wanted to try to just make it simple. I didn't want to have this over complicated book. Just keep it simple. You know, it has got some meat in there here and there, but it's mainly just milk. And I tried to keep it simple for those who are babes in Christ, they can pick it up and then if they encounter these arguments. Okay, here's the easy scripture to give them. Um, if you know, or if you're just, if if you're not saved, again, it's a great evangelistic book, I think, because it'll, it'll show people, okay, what salvation is not, and just plainly what it is, um, just from the scriptures. And so that's that's kind of again why I wrote it because I wanted to. Again, there's such a burden to see people saved, and so many more, so many more and more people as the time goes on. Obviously, obviously the world's gone its going its direction, obviously, um, but there's some there's more and more people. They're getting, and again, through talking to people, again, this book, they're like, yeah, I'm tired of this whole church building thing. I'm tired of going through the whole mundane week in, week out, just junk. I'm not learning anything. Because I was telling you this story um, you know, about a friend I knew. She came to the same conclusion. She's coming to the same conclusion. I'm going to this church building every single week. I'm not learning anything. I have questions that are not answering them. It's just the same thing every week, you know, you know, like a whole month of like, you know, okay, how to pay your 10% tithe, you know, all the <laughs> What does this like the dumb stuff salvation's never explained nothing you know and then and so she's like yeah i finally came out of this and because again because again I, I witnessed her over a year ago you know and she finally is like i i see what you're saying and and then that's just one example so many people are are just hurting just for some real truth they're like and and the reaction you get with people is just is interesting because it's not it's like oh wait i i don't have to go to some weekly organized thing and act a certain way i can just come to God and have like that actual like relationship that I, I've been told I'm supposed to have an organized religion, but now I can actually really have in the privacy of my own home, you know, and just, yeah. he shows me his word and actually teaches me. And that's why I tell people, I said, I've, I've learned more in the last, um, you know, how many years being saved and born again and reading the word of God than I ever have and ever would have being in through all the public schooling or any church building or anything else. You can mark that down to anyone that's lost. You can have our word on it. You will learn more in just a month's time than you ever will in 10, 10 years of being in a church. But pick one. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, it, it is definitely true that a lot of people are getting sick and tired of the whole structure of the organized, you know, religion, church type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just confusing. And, and, you know, the thing is people are confused and they go to their pastor and they're not they say, hey, I have, I have some questions. Well, we'll try to set up a time for that. Or maybe you should go to a Bible college someplace or whatever else. It's just, no, just tell me the truth. Just just plain and simple. Lay it out there. That's one thing I liked about your book, too. Um, you know, just simple, plain language. You know, you weren't trying to impress people or whatever else. Just, you know, shooting from the hip, you know. Right. That's the way and it should. That, uh, I, that's, uh, I just, and that's another thing, too. People, they just... Even if they're preaching the right plan of salvation, they overcomplicate it by doing all this other stuff. And it's like you, you got to bring it back down. Like I said, just the ABC thing. It look, it, it sounds kind of corny, cliche. I know that, 
mm-hmm. but that's what salvation is. I mean, it really is. You just you admit you're a sinner. You know, a true sinner, not just the, again the you know the general knowledge. Okay, anyone can do that. I mean, you actually admit you're a sinner. You get to that point where like I realize I'm no good. Like you really do. Like, there's nothing I can do. Everything I've done's failed. And then you believe the scriptures. You believe the gospel. What Jesus Christ did for you. And then you just you, you, you call out to him. You confess both in prayer. Done. I mean that that's it. Yeah. Done. <laughs> you, know, you can't. I mean, and 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 just again, people they try to overcomplicate it because of, because a of man's wickedness. And some people I understand they kind of do like they do it accidentally. I mean, I you know not everyone tries to deceive people. A lot of people. They're just doing it for their gain because they want to you know again they wanted to you know draw you know disciples after themselves. And then of course make more money. Which the whole church building thing, okay? Just you got to keep sitting here, going through the same boring stuff. Because I think, because again, like you said, I think a lot of people too they come to the realization, yeah, yeah, the yeah the man of God, you know, the, the reverend here don't really know too much. He knows yeah. just he knows just much he knows just as much as I do. You know, in many cases more, be, just because you can look and just go, I'm reading this and it's not what you're saying. Because uh-huh. you know, again, again, there are just some things you don't have to be saved to just read and go. It doesn't say that, you know. I hear what you're saying, Pastor, but that's scripture says something else. And then again, you know, like I said, going back to this this one friend I was telling you about, it came to the same conclusion of all this other stuff again, because you know, like this church was using like the Passion Translation, and she was going like, man, like she she, she going like, what's this stupid thing, you know? Like it's it's not even a Bible. I don't know what this is, you know. And they sat down with the leadership, and they're like, what's going on? And and Long story short, the leadership was like, no, we don't care. We're going to do it this way, this way, and that's how it's going to be. Basically, just like it or lump it, basically. And so basically, they're like, okay, bye. <laughs> you know? And 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 that's my thing to, you know, people, again, I'm, and I'm sure you would agree with me. We're not saying you lost or none because you go to some church building, but I'm, we're telling you right now, man, you're 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 never going to have that true fellowship with the Lord. You you, you just won't have it. And I can mm-hmm. – so I'm saying, and you know, I've seen just the fruit of my own life. I'm not trying to, you know, toot my own horn, but I've I've just seen my own life, you know, just by just trying to live by the scriptures and just take it literally, you know, the Lord has just blessed me greatly for it. And and again, again, like I said, just that's why I wanted to write a book, just very simple. Like like you don't have to go through this organized whatever. Just you don't have to have some priest class above you. Just just read the scripture. That's what it's there for. That's why I, I said in the very introduction of my book, you know, get a King James Bible and you judge me according to the scriptures. And that's how I am. And, and, and that's how you are as well. And that's what you have to be. Like, I'm not some priest class because I said so or whatever. No, that's the point. Get a Bible out. And, just, and, and some people, like, and some people, they've never even picked up a Bible. They just kind yeah. of, they've heard some guy just preaching at them. They just go, okay. You know, for me, again, I was never a huge church goer, but I mean, I, yeah, I went to some churches here, you know, churches, you know, here and there um, throughout my life. But it was mainly just, you know, getting stuff off like the History Channel and, you know, a couple magazines or something. And you don't really learn anything. You know, I mean, again, because believe me, I was, in, I mean, I believe some like some really strange stuff just because I never actually had a Bible in my hand just to go, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember I went to this modern church the one time, and the preacher gave an illustration from the Dances with Wolves movie. <laughs> I thought, okay, turn your Bible to what again? You know. So, and and that stuff only lasts so long with people. People just they get yeah. a hunger and they say, "I have questions. I want answers." And if they're not getting it, they're going to leave. And you're going to go to the next one and the next one and the next one. And you know, I I I've never taught that anybody that stepped foot inside of a church building is lost, you know, right. and, you know, there are people that go and, and they're struggling there and they're trying to find the truth, but the Lord will lead them out of those places. Sure. And um, so, well, let's go through what are the different chapters of your book? Okay. Kind of just give a brief, you know, synopsis of, of what each chapter is about. Okay. <clears throat> I guess we'll start with the, the, uh, Section one there, you know, introduction and a quick exposition there. Okay. Section one. You can go ahead and start if you want to talk about section one. What did what did you cover in there? 
Okay. Um, so basically, um, what I did was um, I have a, a quick like message to the readers because I want people just to kind of like look, just ease into this. This is not some like you know beat you over the head with it. Just like I said, just check me out and just follow the scriptures. You know, that's I just want people to help. You, know, you can trust me. I'm your friend. I'm not trying to have some priest class over you and whatever else. Just look up the scriptures for yourself. But in, in, in the introduction, I basically just cover like okay, here in this time of day and age, we have Romans Romans chapter ten. One of the greatest like, like evangelistic chapters ever, you know, and it still always will be, including and particularly Romans chapters uh, chapter ten verses nine through thirteen. That passage that led so many people to salvation, but then then that has come under such fire from all these different groups, like in, like the no prayer people, and you have like the lordship people they tamper with that a little bit, they, then the Catholics they. Mess with that a little bit too, you know, because that's where the premise of this book too, which I cover in introduction. Everything will kind of go through the veil of like what Romans 10 says, because Romans 10 covers everything you need to know, that, that you need to know for salvation in just one quick chapter, and that's what I kind of I show mainly in the in the exposition, and um, you know, and throughout the book too. And, and I do say again, I, I preface, I'm a King James Bible believer. I will only use a King James unless otherwise, but it, but, it, but it's not only, but well, I'll say it like this, it isn't just, it isn't just be, you know, that I use it. I don't just prefer it. You know, I believe it. And, mm -hmm. and, and I show throughout examples and throughout the book, like where just like, you, you can't say this is, Oh, it's making it easier or just, Oh, it all says, Oh, it all says the same thing. No, I don't. And I show clear examples. like just, and, and we'll see throughout like, no, it, it's completely changed different meaning you have different salvation simple as that but then moving into the the, the exposition i just go through the, the chapter um i don't know how much we want to discuss here but um i i broke it down to sections um i start off with uh you know going with uh, you know verses one through four and the basic premise there um well what well, do you want to read through it or just just kind of just so just, just kind of give your your thoughts on you know section one, you know first part there's one two three repeat after me that would be the uh, you know the the what you're going to get at the average church building you're going to yeah. go in there they're going to get the atmosphere just right get the emotions stirred up and then they're going to say okay every head nod every eye closed that whole thing yeah um, and and I'm saying just right right where you said it you know that the, like the, again that's the first like real actual like, get into okay what's wrong some of these stuff because again because it's about romans 10 i i and there's kind of that slant towards prayer you know i like you said discuss the one two three thing and then there's this um you know, again i, I discussed right here on page 19 it says you know uh, the first position we are going to examine is what has been nicknamed easy believism or sometimes called quick prayerism and then i i preface this i think a few other times in the book but i i say up front i personally do not like the term easy believism because salvation is simple and easy and i give second corinthians 11 3 and matthew 11 20 30. you know and again you know I, I still use the term easy believism but in reality well well, well, well no, salvation is easy it is it is one it is the easiest thing you ever do mm -hmm. but when you say easy believism it's this just this quick okay get the okay you just you know get it over with you know say the prayer or just you know, no prayer at all which <laughs> we'll cover that and then after that then the christian life at that point is easy because again the, the, the real christian life is hard it's hard to stay away from sin and wickedness and you know and beyond it all it, it's hard i mean it's it's a constant battle every day i mean you're in a war and that's where easy believers in my and in that sense is a good name in a sense because it's just this nonchalant just let it all hang out type of mentality right but but as far as the thing again i discussed the whole thing where the, you got the preacher up up in the thing, he's saying, "Okay, now I'm okay. Now now pray this prayer, or repeat after me, or ask Jesus into your heart, kind of a type of thing. If you want to, you know, like receive salvation, you know, and you know, and I and and I, you know, I, I put that little like little thing you always kind of said to how you always heard every weekend the whole the whole thing of like every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around type of thing, you know." Uh, now, yeah. you know, I personally never went through that stuff, but I know people that did, and and, and it's just it's just weird, and it's just, and like and I discuss here in these chapters, it's a complete numbers game, it's just profit numbers. Um, yeah, I actually got a comment on one of my Jack Hiles exposed videos, and this guy was saying that that uh, he was part of the whole Hiles cult, mm -hmm. and he said literally, he said they were they were children that when they looked at the records, they baptized them seventeen times. And 
you know, literally counted them as new baptisms each time. And he said that they'd, they'd have bus children come through. And he said they'd be, they would lead them in the prayer of salvation, this quick prayer thing. They'd yeah. do it five times in one morning. When they get on the bus, when they're heading to the church, in Sunday school, in the regular service, and then when they're heading home, they'd have them pray five times and count it as unique individual salvations each time. That's so, true. you know, they'd, they'd pick up 100 children. They'd say, we got 500 saved. <laughs> That's terrible. And he said there was actually a case where they reported in one of the cities of one of these Hiles churches, they reported 100,000 salvations. And there were, the city only had 65,000 inhabitants. <laughs> so it's kind of like, okay, numbers aren't quite working out there somewhere. But, but well, uh, and that's the funny thing is that then when you actually see brethren, you know, I get you. Know, I do believe our, you know, some people. I do believe are brethren. Call him, call Hiles a brother. I'm like, people, come on, just use common sense, like, and just look at the fruit that they came out of his out of his cult. They they did nothing. And, and and that's what I, I cover, in in the next chapter after that, but because because again, I, and I and I preface this point up front, and this is something you have to get, um, because you know I give examples like Billy Graham, his like quick little okay, just say the prayer and you're in. I give I give an example of that, um, and um, and, and again I give another example, of one you've covered in your videos that that one guy um, from Corn, he got quote unquote saved and now he's like leading like this like pathetic little prayer and okay that's it you know yeah <laughs> um but the thing i and i i want to preface this too and this is an important point to get this whole issue of like the sinner's prayer and i i discussed this on page 23 i'll go ahead and just read it here real quick um and this is an important point to get and i and i and i and i'm very clear about what i mean here and i say this so Second paragraph, I say, some of you may be saying, okay, Jacob, you've shown some examples of the people preaching slash affected by it, and I could keep that list going for hours. What is the actual problem with the sinner's prayer? Well, there are several things to look at. For starters, the term, the sinner's prayer, and the phrases that go along with it are not actual scripture. This is only a minor point, but the standard is what God has laid out in his word. So if, if, so if a particular word does, does or does not appear, is for a reason. Which is, again, that's the whole... which. I mean, you know, you know that right there is, is explains all the other junk people hear. It's like if it's not in the scriptures, there's a you know there's a good reason why. If it's there, there's a good reason why. You know, and it, it could be stuff again like on the issue of the Godhead or just you know other things like that. That term's not there. Well, it's it's pretty much there for a reason. People sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. Is 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 the Bible a lie? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but uh, <clears throat> they said. Um, he said, this is only a minor point, but the standard is what God has laid out in his word. So if a particular one does, does or not appear, it is for a reason. Which leads to my second point is you are you are not told the exact words to pray prayer to be saved. Then I then I, I clarify, don't confuse what I'm trying to say. I'm not I am not saying we shouldn't pray. What I am saying is that exact phrase does not appear. I bring this up because people can easily misconstrue that into thinking that just mouthing some words will get them saved. Which leads into the main issue of the sinner's prayer. People think the prayer in of itself is what saves. That is completely wrong. The mere act of praying saves no one. Again, let me clarify so there's no confusion. I am not saying we shouldn't pray for salvation. Romans 10, 9 through 10, and verse 13 plainly says we need to pray. But just because a person prays does not mean jack squat. You are someone who is trusting in your prayer and think you are going to have because you prayed the prayer. And let me say, you have been deceived and are working for your salvation. Prayer is not a work. There is no scripture to support such an idea. And I, I, I give a page reference to that, which we'll discuss discuss later because of the no prayer people saying, prayer is a work. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know. But, um, but I said, however, as, I, as, if, as I have already stated, if you rely on the prayer, that means you're not relying on Christ. And, and again, and, and again, this what I mean by that is, again, if you're just coming to someone there, okay, you're going to get people all the time. They say, okay, okay, what do I got to do? Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Pray this prayer. Okay. Yeah, okay. Dear Jesus. Uh, do you know whatever. And and they're thinking. And or the people they come to the altar thinking. Oh, because I said those little words. I said it just right. Now I'm in. You know. And it's like no, that's, that's not it. And I and again I show this um like this uh, the next couple pages again. You know. I, I give uh, Luke 6, 4, uh, chapter 6, verse 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. Rightly the bunch of the heart, the mouth speaketh. 
you know? And that's the thing I try to preface to people. It's a natural thing that occurs. This isn't just some forced, okay, just say it. Say it this way, you gotta say it. You know, it just it comes naturally. If you really come to that point of salvation, it's gonna come out. Now, and I, and I also discuss, I'm, I'm not saying I'm against like, like a gospel track that says, you know, here here's like an example of prayer. I'm not against that. That, that that's, that's fine. What I'm saying is of the people that you have to like say it this way. And, and okay, okay. So did you pray the prayer? You know, did you? Okay, you're in. If you don't, okay, okay, we're not in yet. You know. Yeah, yeah. We used to go out to, um, door to door and things. We'd run into these people all the time. You know, and they're just totally lost. No desire for the Bible or whatever else. I mean, just and and you know, are you a Christian? Oh yeah, I prayed a prayer. You know, and this one guy, I remember he's he's standing there and he says. Uh, we said, you know, are you saved? He said, that's what they tell me. <laughs> I said, okay, who yeah. tells you? Well, my, my wife's pastor at the church there. They had me come forward. I prayed the prayer, and they, they said, that's it. Well, he said, but do you know for sure you're going to die? And he said, or, do you know for sure you're going to go to heaven when you die? He said, no, I have no idea. And he said, I actually had a heart attack, you know, a month ago. And he said, I'm kind of scared about where I'm going to go when I die. He said, I really have no idea. You know, and we got to share the gospel with him, but it, it's really? that's the whole point of that chapter there. You mm -hmm. know, for people exactly. watching, you know, we're obviously we're not against prayer, but like you said, the prayer just getting somebody to repeat it, and you know, and I've had atheists mock me and things, and they'll and they'll pray some prayer. Oh God, please forgive me as a sinner. You know, I exactly, I, I, I have that in the book too. It's exciting. I, I actually had that occur, like even to me. To like, yeah. you know, like, they start mocking you, whatever, because they've been so just filtered with the whole just pray the prayer and you're in. You know, because you know, again, people again, we'll discuss him in a minute here because that's the next chapter. You know, you know, Jack Hiles, he pastored, you know, pastor church over Hammond, Indiana. Well, for those who don't know, I, I live in Indiana as well, and he pastored about his church, like about, about a little less than two hours away from where I live. So that stuff is especially, you know, my area, you know, it's kind of been in that area where people have just kind of prayed the prayer and. That's their little salvation. They don't think about it anymore. They go on with life. Nothing changes. Yep. And yeah. And, and that's not true salvation. Exactly. And so, we'll, so moving right into that is the next chapter. You know, is the thing of hyper souling. And now, and now this specifically is more because okay, the, fir the, the first chapter is more just like the whole actual like in the church building type of setting where you just the average pray the prayer thing. But the hyper soul winning is kind of more what you have gone after on your channels with like the with the Jack Kyles and Stephen Anderson people. And those are the two people I do because again I name names in this book. Uh, I know mm -hmm. some people there they're not all they're not really hot about the idea. Well, I do that just because if you might have heard someone, you heard their name and you go and you go, oh really? I didn't know so and so taught that or preached that. And then you can actually look it up and confirm that's what they're saying. And that's why you need to uh, name a name. Um, that just I, it's, it's important to do that, you know. Jesus did it, Paul did it, the apostles did it. You, you've got to do it. Yeah, it's just it's just about being honest, right? You're not, not trying to. We're not trying to destroy anybody. We're just trying to be honest, right? And, and not this whole ambiguous, you know. That you know, there's certain people out there, you know, like you know, like certain, like you know, a certain individual likes to do. Yeah, <laughs> breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I always love how he refers to himself too. You see, oh. brother breaker, uh, brother breaker. Brother Rick, why don't you just say I this or you know me or whatever? That's another issue, though. Yeah, I'll, I'll say we'll discuss but, him later. <laughs> but yeah. um, but I mean, as far as the hyper soloing thing, again, it's just they they got the, the this this memorized little thing. They have just practiced it out, ref, you know, refined it, whatever. And they they, they act like Mormons and in, in Jehovah's Witnesses. They come to the door like sometimes you know, in teams, sometimes sometimes by themselves, mainly in teams. Again, you're you're a part of this some of the stuff, so you know better than I would. Um, but it's it's like this weird Mormon missionary type of stuff. They come to your door and they kind of force you into this little thing, and mm -hmm. okay, and they and they will not stop until you pray it. And there you go. That's yep. the the book that Hiles damn people to hell with. Yep. And, and we were taught this method, and it's you know don't let them sidetrack you. If they ask you questions about the Bible, bring it back to salvation. You say well, that's an interesting question, but we can talk about that later. But here's the thing, you know, and it's the whole deal. Yeah. You got to get them into church. You got to get their the number there and whatever else it's it's sickening it is so it, but yeah that's the hyper soul winning next is the come on down you're the next contestant to walk the aisle <laughs> <laughs> so you get them there, door to door the hyper soul winning then you get them to come to your church you know yep. basically yep. What you have. 
And so that's the kind of thing with this is the whole walking down the aisle thing. And you have the issue of the altar call. Some people call it like they call it like the mourner's bench or um, again. And that's just, and I discuss in the book, that's a, a uh, tradition, tradition that showed up and, you know, and I'll say, and again, I said this in the book, I'm not saying you're lost. If you've ever walked an aisle and you know, you prayed the, I'm not, I'm not saying that. All right. Don't do not confuse me. Okay. However, it's not, scripture and there's a reason for it i show this thing here um i'll read it here real quick um on page 33 this is from an um an article here um where the altar call came from and it's um, the, the, um it says quote our uh, altar calls are a recent historic phenomenon beginning in the 1830s in america other early names for them was, was the anxious seat in the mourner's bench they cannot be found in the Bible. I've got that underlined. Like, it's not in the Bible. But are, are an attempt to adapt the, the call for repentance to a particular cultural context where such a public show of confession may find greater response. One of the most famous 19th century revivalists, Charles Grandison Finney, we'll discuss more about him later, um, popular, quote, popularized the idea of the altar call in, in order to sign up his converts for the abolition movement. And so I, I kind of discussed a little bit that there. But then I, I get into the thing of like, well, first of all, the problem with an altar call is, again, like we said, that quote is self-explanatory. It's not in the Bible. And like I said earlier, if it's not in the Bible, there's probably a good reason for it. It may, it may not necessarily be wrong you know, type of thing, but there's a re there's an reason why it's not there. And I discuss it because, well, the problem is there is no actual altar for a Christian. You don't have to, like, go to a physical altar if you're, mm -hmm. if you're a born-again believer. Cause, but and then, uh, then I briefly discussed this issue. You know, the only way to have an altar is you need to have an actual building to do it in, and that would be your your church building, which again is nowhere in scripture. And again, I said, you know, I again, I'm not saying you're lost because you go to one. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm just saying though, you can't have the altar without that building. I mean, what right. house church? I mean, what house church ha ha has, has like an altar? You know, and no, they just don't. You know, what I mean. Mm -hmm. And you know the whole thing of the revival meetings, the tent you know, camp or tent uh, meetings and things like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff was the Methodists that were doing that, and the Methodists right. were the ones. They're the grandfather organization that brought out the charismatic movement. Sure. And, I mean, we're talking back in Victorian times where people were very extremely proper, and they were going into. They're having the. They would come on under the jerks. They called it where people would go into like convulsions and things. No scripture for that. They're rolling around on the floor and whatever. And this is all tied in with this altar call stuff. Yeah, exactly. So there's so many problems with it. And, you know, they're perpetuating this with this whole hyper soul winning, get them into church, come forward to an old fashioned altar, the whole thing. Yeah. And it's, all, it's all tied in with this stuff. Right. So, and then the next one there, childhood conversions, I think, is also another one of the big abominations. I yeah. Mean, you know, we actually ran into people. Uh, we did actually meet some saved people when, when I used to go out door to door. And I remember this one woman, she said, she said that uh, she for years believed that she had gotten saved when she was two years old. You know, I mean, I, I guess in the nursery or something, two year old conversion. And she said, and she got to be older and she realized there's no way I'm a Christian. There's no way. I, no. And she genuinely got born again. But a lot of people don't come out of it. They go into that childhood conversion. I got, I heard it in Sunday school, vacation Bible school, and it's a, it ties in perfectly. I loved how you, you did that. Ties it in with that whole. I prayed this prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, I was two years old or something like that. Um, right. But it doesn't matter because I prayed that prayer. Right. You know, and it's it's and it, it, I discuss this in my book because again, and something for those who don't know about me. Um, when I grew up, I never, I never even heard of Romans ten. I never was, I never even prayed the prayer, or I even heard pray the prayer. I honestly never did, you know. And even if I did, I sure didn't remember it because I, I sure never did it. But for my, my case, again, I, I, I give it a story where every year I'd go. I think I did that up till I was ten. I want to say I, I kept doing this. I would go to my grandmother's uh, to her church. I'm not even sure like what denomination it was. I, it wasn't Catholic, but it was definitely. I think it was definitely a Protestant one. Um. But that that you know, you know that's irrelevant. Um, and of course, no, no, no. What I and for again for every Easter because I never went, I never went to the church thing. It was just like every Easter kind of thing. And now, 
did I go there because I wanted to, you know, say thank you, thank you, Lord, for dying for our sins? No, I, no, I was there for the, I was there for the Easter egg hunt. I was there for the candy, uh -huh. and so they, and so they actually had a guy like in like an Easter, in, in like an Easter bunny costume. Hi, kids, you know, and, and and like you get to sit in his lap and take pictures, and you go out and you get, and I, and I remember too, I remember the thoughts, even at a young age, I still. Bas I basically had like a, a weird hate for God and his word. I remember I used to mock it because at, at, at that young age, because I, because, you know, you know, television was my, because, you know, because again, I, I was one of those kids when I grew up, and this is not an exaggeration. I'd be one of those kids where I'm like sitting in front of the screen like this, you know, like just right up to it, you know, that's all I did, you know, for like a long time. And so, and, and, and you would see stuff on TV. I'm, I'm just like, well, um, well, these guys don't have this Christianity. I don't hear, you know what I mean? That that stuff starts setting your mind. They, well, they're cool. They're having fun and friends. Well, I don't really need this. And there, there's that that mindset kind of steps in. You go there and it's like, oh, I'm just there for the candy and the goodies. And I remember because they, they, they have like Bible prizes. Because again, after you, you get like you know, eggs that have prizes and you go, you'll claim your prizes. And I would avoid all of the Bible ones. <laughs> and I would go right for the candy. You know? and, and that's the point. Little kids and they they suck them in with this like okay here's your lollipop if you pray the prayer or you do this and it's like no 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 and first again first of all they're not even old enough to understand what sin is I give the scriptures for that there's no way there's no way again I, I give a story too where you know I knew I ha I had done wrong I I had like damaged I had damaged one of my dad's possessions and I lied about it you know because he figured out it wasn't working I lied about it and after of course he caught me and whatever else and. You know, we had it all patched out, obviously. But the thing is, I wasn't, you know, like afraid, like, oh, no, I just lied to God. You know, thing. I was accountable to my dad, you know, and that's the thing. A little kid is just not going to understand that. Just It just is what it is. And yeah. and, and, and so that's the basic point there is, you know, again, because, again, again, you have the age of accountability and there's always the issue. OK, OK, well, how old can they be? And I don't really set like a like a certain age, but um, I um, I think I'd say I said like at least a bare minimum, like 13, 14. And even that you could, you could argue that maybe even later. Um, yeah, cause you know, I, cause I, I got saved at the age of 15. Um, I, 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 and I don't, and, and, and that was like a month before I turned 16, you know? Um, so, I mean, I was fortunate enough to get saved in, in an actual like young age, not young as in like two year olds, but, Young, like a legitimate, I got born again at 15. Um, but any, any younger than that, you get to the point where it's like, and I, and I, and I explain why, because that teenager, they, they they still can barely, I mean, because, you know, they're, they're not really, any younger than that, really, you can't really read the, the language of a King James, first of all. I mean, not in its entirety. Any again, people, they're still going through, you know, you know, puberty. They haven't had, like, the actual, like, desire to, like, full-on rebel and do their own thing that 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 desire is not quite there yet you know and so that you can't be accountable to sin yet and so right. i put that out in there and it's just like you said it's it's so damaging that childhood conversion is again, is again I, like i said i never prayed the prayer but i was born into kind of like a christian mentality thing and because you're a christian or you know okay do you believe in god kind of a thing okay you know, you're, you're a Christian because you say you are, and that's basically mm -hmm. all I do. And I, I, I just had a bunch of different like, like philosophies I'd pick up throughout my life, and that's about it. You yeah, know? and you know, the whole thing is when you study secular marketing tactics, uh, one of the biggest demographics that they go after is children. Yeah, and um, and, and, and the, the, the one thing too I, I had to mention is again, you because know, it annoys me when I see brethren, like people, and I I, I don't like naming brethren, but you kind of have to is jack chick like some of these tracks he puts they put on this like what are you people doing you know what i mean telling people to like what well, i mean there's one they handed out this is like one of like one like one this is like one of like the last tracks uh brother jack chick ever wrote and it's like and he's got this like little kid he went to sunday school and he's saved and now he's like some like child preacher and it's like come on you know like, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not, I mean, obviously preach the Bible to your child, no doubt, obviously do that, but don't put him through the ringer and say he was saved when he's not, you know, I mean, you yeah. are just setting some up for, for a fall. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, we're going to section two, Roman Catholicism and Lordship Salvation. <laughs> Fun ones. <laughs> um, so but then with this one now, we because again, there's the, what you'll find when you start to study out these different like false religions. And for those who are just tuning in and, you know, new to the channel, um, whatever, there's usually two streams you're going to come across. It's the Roman Catholic Lordship, you know, where they're openly works, basically. And you have the other side where it's like the free grace, easy believism, where they, they try to veil their works. But and we'll, we'll discuss more of that later because I, I do prove that well, the, these free grace guys, they're still self-righteous. They're still preaching works. But those are the two main streams you're going to kind of fall into. And, and everyone's not exactly perfect because every little path will lead you right back to self-righteousness, you know, of a false gospel, what I'm saying. But this one I discussed, okay, the Roman Catholic stuff. And again, it, 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 I, I explain, again, I don't go into everything Roman Catholics and preachers. There's a lot to explain, a lot of stuff to cover that is just heretical. But I just cover the basic main premise of their salvation, the fact that, okay, here's how you attain it. Then you have then you have to maintain it, and then there then 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 there's always a mindset of like okay, you're gonna lose it no matter what kind of kind of like mentality. So now now you gotta regain it, and just this pro just this ever continuing just life process of just losing it, getting it back, losing it, getting it back, losing it, get it back, and and the, and I even because I was looking up like you know different things. Okay, so like so like what do the Roman Catholics discuss about Romans ten and they. And there was even some. I saw some guy on some Catholic forum. He was, he was quoting because and because of, of the new versions, the slight little word tampering they did would 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 almost imply that, okay, you know, when you call to be saved, it, you know, it you know will be saved as if it's a gonna happen in the future, not like an instantaneous here it is. Mm -hmm. And so that's how they can kind of sneak in the work a little bit, you know. So I kind of discussed that. and again, like I I show scriptures, salvation's by faith. You know, it's you said by God's grace. There's no works involved with that. Obviously, again, Roman Catholicism they don't they don't deny it. They'll sit there and tell you, no, it is works. You, you must have works, and um, which is, and I bring this up too because again, it's important because when you start at Roman Catholicism, you'll you'll find that just about every single false gospel and religion kind of ties you back to them. You know, to some level. You know, and it, it, if it's not exact salvation, they'll get you on some of their core doctrines. You know, and they'll bring you back that way. But um, um, so they have someone to cover there. So they, um, and, and I do I do give this quote from the from the catechism, and a lot of people don't even know this, including Catholics. And I, on the last page of the the of that chapter fifty two, um, I said this. I said one more thing. I thought I should add for kicks. Do you know that Roman Catholicism teaches teaches that that you can become your own god? Don't believe me? Here's the thing. This is number four sixty. For the Son of God became man so that, so that we might become God. A capital G God. Like we can become God. The only begotten Son of God wanting to make us shares in his divinity assumed our nature so that he made men might make men gods. And most Catholics don't even know that. Yeah. Um, and, and when you show them that, they're like, they're, they, they, when you show them that, they, they always really like want to believe it. Like, no, because even they know that's ridiculous, you know. And it's like exactly you're. That's ex people when you're. That's exactly the promise Satan gave in the Garden of Eden. When you stop trusting God and you're doing your own thing, you are be trying to become your own god. You have your own righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to add there? Or move on. No, just we'll move on. I mean, it's okay. it, it's. I think what you said there, though, that you study all the false salvation methods, and there's all a flavor of Roman Catholicism there. Yep. So. And so then you get to the next one. This is very similar to Roman Catholicism, a little veiled, but it's Catholicism. And it, it's the it's the classic lordship salvation phrase. If Christ is not Lord of all, then he's not Lord at all. Um, you don't really hear that phrase too much anymore, but that's always a phrase that's been with lordship salvation. And, it, and it's essentially the same thing um, as Roman Catholicism. They have a thing where they got, what's it? Um. um accidental and like willful sins where it where like where you can commit all like the accidental ones and it's okay but then you but if you commit if you commit sin willfully okay now you lost your salvation mm -hmm. you know it's, and it's the same thing as Roman catholicism you have like your venial and moral you can you can commit can commit as many venials as you need to it just you, you spend longer in purgatory but if you commit the one mortal one you lose salvation you gotta start over again and that's kind yeah. of what lord salvation is and then 
I give three. Uh, well, actually, I do um, cover passages on eternal security. I didn't cover it on the Catholicism, but I finally discussed it with Lordship Salvation. It's some of the most clearest passages. You can't deny it. Here's eternal security. You know? Because, again, because if you deny that, your teaching works. It's just simple as that. Um, and then I kind of give, like, the main streams you're going to find. The um, I got three streams. Endurance, uh, water works, <laughs> um, and then confession. Again, just the, the endurance thing. Okay, you you quote unquote, you quote unquote you believe in the gospel, but then but then you still have to like endure to the end, basically. Don't don't falter along the way, you know. Just endure. Then you know the water works. That's like then they throw in like the water baptism, and that's like a lot of like your Church of Christ stuff as well, and like in their you know like baptism, you know. And you know that's a whole cult in of itself. And, and that was actually one of the first people when I got newly saved, just brand new born again. Obviously, I had talked to you know like non denominationals and Catholics, but the first one I actually had like a real like like encounter with was a water dog, and she was trying to pu push me back to like John was it John three, and show me see look it says you know like you're like born of water and spirits to so see the water is the map and like no of course not now I was a baby in Christ and I didn't know any better and I was just like but even even I knew I'm like well that, that sounds like works you know mm -hmm. and I was like that can't be right. It was funny too because she she when she told me this she it took like it took her ten minutes to find that passage. <laughs> it took her like ten minutes. I'm like, because because this is back when I was still in high school, and I'm just doing my own thing. And fine, after ten minutes, she finally finds it. I'm just going like, I'm like, well, I mean, I was like, well, I I want to be baptized, but I'm like, that sounds like a work what you're saying, you know? And it is. I mean, you if you believe in baptism for you know salvation, you know through you know via Acts chapter two or John three which they try to pervert that's a word it's not, you're not saved it's an ordinance you should do it but it's not re required okay you know in if you force on someone yeah that's to work and then you have the confession issue which is one of the original points i wanted to cover when i originally wanted to do the book was this thing of okay romans 10 where people they confuse first john 1 9 and they throw that in the plan of salvation and you know again i i've, I've made the same mistake as well at times i'm sure everyone kind of has because you know because where it says in first john 1 9 you know you know you know I mean, if we confess our sins he'll be, he'll be faithful and just to forgive us for our sins so they take that and they stick it in romans 10 where it says confess there and they go oh so you have to confess individual sins and see that's that's an issue you're not actually confessing individual sins now if you like again like again when i got saved and called upon the lord did i confess some sins well sure because that was on my heart but the act of you know confessing you're like sins that that will not save you. People do it all the time that they, they get stuff off their chest. Well, they're still not saved. You know, but it, it, it gets, it, it's it's the same thing as Catholicism minus the actual confessional booth. You're just you're, you're just doing it anywhere, but it's the same basic premise. Mm -hmm. um, and I give some examples. I I, I I named some names like Ray Comfort, and I, I I link it to a video I have on my channel where I show where he's openly. Saying you like saying like you gotta like stop lusting like yeah it's like start walking in holiness yeah. one of his things his his issue is he says a lot of right things in terms of taking mm -hmm. people to the law to convict them of sin yeah uh, Jesus is the only way and just pray the best way you know how kind of deal yeah. but then the problem is when he runs into false converts then he does lordship salvation yeah and, you know you know oh you know it, just the way you deal with a false convert is just talking about truth. Yep. You know, the truth is of scripture is what's going to separate real and false Christians. Yep. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, you can't judge somebody just boom. Um, you're, you know, standing there smoking a cigarette or something. And I'm just going to say, Oh, you're not walking in holiness or something. <laughs> it's a sanctification issue. They're going to get rid of that. Eventually Lord will get it out of their life. Well, I, I thought it was hilarious because in that video I showed, she, she's talking to some girl on, on some plane, and she's telling her, like, you got to, like, walk in holiness, like, no more sin, stop lusting. And and his analogy he gave this woman was, like, okay, it's like, what happens if the plane goes down and you got seconds to live? Well, and she's sitting there, like, dumbfounded, like, well, wait, you just told me if this plane's about to go down, but we said I got to walk in the holiness. Well, I don't have a whole lot of time to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's exactly, it's it's like, that that sounds so stupid, you know, and. And you know, and I, I, I even give like example of like Levi Price, um, brother Jeremy Carter. I see he's in the comments. He worked with them, so he knows more about that type of stuff than I ever would. I was never like an actual like lordship salvationist. 
he could tell you everything about it because again he was in that crowd he knows them the people there what they teach and you got some some like some some like Levi Price who went to like far extreme where he's saying he he would like cut off his like you know what to start living holy you know and 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 it's like yeah that's the that's the extreme no nah, and I, of course I, he didn't do that but you know it's just the mindset they have you know mm-hmm. um yep. So what, what's the next one here? Christ-like. And so this, again, it's similar to the Lordship one, but then it gets further. And we're, it, it's okay, because you know, Great Comfort kind of teaches some of this to a, a, an extent, but this is the one where they actually tell you, um, you must be sinlessly perfect. You must, like, no more sin. And which, again, I don't, I don't think I need to exp expound too much. That's nonsense. Paul himself said he struggled with sin. Um I do have a quote I want to read though. I didn't because I, I mentioned this earlier about uh, by, about Charles G. Finney, the same guy who popped by the altar call. Well, this is what he believed, and then again, you have a you know brethren that exalts him like he's some great brother. It's like no, he's not. I have a quote here from Finney that again, um, th um, this is from his memoirs. This is the, these are his writings on page sixty four. He says, "Well, I said this. Charles G. Finney, the same man who popped by the the unscriptural altar call, has helped lay the foundation for this movement." Many taught that taught against Christ's imputed righteousness. Okay, we don't work for our righteousness. We get we are righteous because of what Jesus Christ did for us. He gives it to us. In his memoirs, he boldly stated, "Quote: I cannot but regard and treat this whole question of, of imputation as a theological fiction, somewhat related to our legal fiction of John Doe and Richard Rowe." And, and that's his um, memoirs. And so he's not saved. That's that. I mean, that that right there is. The opposite of salvation. So I don't care what things he done or how how like he helped expose like masonry. I'm sorry that that right there is the quote of a lost man. You yeah. call that if you call imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ theological fiction again. That's the whole that's the whole chapter of Romans chapter four and five is Christ imputed his righteousness to you. You're you're just denying like just whole chapters of scripture. You're lost. Sorry. Well, I'm not sorry, but you know what I mean. And then yeah. I keep even someone like John Wesley. And I said, then you have John Wesley, the founder of the Wesleyan Methodist. Again, like he said earlier, the whole holiness thing, which turned into, into you know, the, the charismatic thing. Mm -hmm. um, he also rejected Christ and Peter righteousness. And I, I give a quote here. This is from the Doctrine, the Doctrine of, of Justification, page 500. He says, many Wesleyan, Wesleyan Methodists, following the example of their founder, have keenly open, or keenly opposed the doctrine of Christ and Peter righteousness. Works. Yep. Um that's that and i and uh, i mentioned too again um uh, like some of the street preachers because that's who it's really among is a lot, a lot of these street preachers again brother jeremy carter he can tell you um more about that he was in that movement movement um so talk to him about that um okay because again for those just tuning in if you've ever heard of like the what's it um the I name them here somewhere the like Westboro Baptist. That's kind of what you're gonna get. This really cultic type of sinlessly perfect and yeah. Yeah, just going out trying to tick people off. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then so I guess we'll move into the next chapter if you if you if, you, if you're done with this one. Yeah. Next one is um I titled uh, tulip sniffers, and um. And for those who don't know what that is, that is a Calvinist. A, Tal a Calvinist has the acronym known as the TULIP, which I lay it out, and I, I refute quickly. I don't go into some big theological why it's wrong. I just explain briefly why it's wrong. Um, as all points, T stands for total depravity, which, uh, which really means total inability, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. And essentially, for those who don't know, it, Calvinism just, he, he teaches that um, you were those who are saved. You are actually you are of the elect before you were even born. He are he predestinated you to be saved already. And though and if you're not of the elect, you're predestined to go to hell automatically. The bloodshed that Christ on the cross was only for that elect. He forces his grace upon you. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. And yet you still got to persevere. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, just, it's like yeah. Well, and that's why I I even said here um I call I call him like a self righteous fruit loop. I mean, because I mean, what I mean? And, and again, you know, I hey, you know, people call that mean, whatever. But I mean, I'm trying to be like people. Come on, you know, how, how can you sit there and tell people, you know, because again, it's like look at me, I'm of the elect and you're not, you know. Yeah. And, then, and 
and after all that, tell people you still got to persevere. You know, like mm-hmm. just wacky. Um, but I, I, I briefly explain why that's wrong. Um, yeah, again, qu- again, quick scripture, First Timothy four ten. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men. That doesn't mean everyone's saved already. That's you know that's you know that's universalism, especially of those that believe. You know. You're, you know, like, again, all the pastors talk about how, how you're elect according to the foreknowledge. You're not elect just because you're born or something. Because again, I've talked to Calvinists. Again, those are those are some of the first people I've ever talked to was a Calvinist when I got when I got newly saved. And I'm like, I'm like, and just my basic was like, so why preach the gospel? You know, yeah. if I'm of the elect and there's no point in preaching the gospel. And of course, they have this big old like answer for you. I'm just like. No, I'm like, again, as a baby of Christ who didn't know any scriptures, I'm going like, well, there's no point in preaching the gospel at that point. Mm-hmm. Just if you're all the elect, okay, I'm the elect, leave me alone. If I'm not, okay, fine, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to hell anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. You know? It's always fun to ask them, too, you know, what happens if you witness to a non-elect person? Yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and and it's, it's funny, too, how magically all their kids – their their kids are automatically elect, you know, just mm-hmm. you know, just miraculously, you know. Yeah, and any baby that dies has to be an elect baby. Yeah. Figure that one out too, you know. Yeah. Kind of stupid, but anyhow, we'll go on to the next section here: charismatics. Yeah. And so I I got three chapters in this section. I it's titled um tongue tied. Because if you know anything about a charismatic, you know they got their tongues, you know, uh, which is uh, yeah, that's just weird. If you've never seen the, if you've never seen a charismatic tongue, it's creepy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and it has no basis in scripture. Oh yeah. no, no, and I I cover the scriptures like Acts chapter two and uh, First Corinthians fourteen. I cover those. Um, and some of, and I cover some of the other things that they have all these like dreams because that's the whole thing about charismatics. They have this weird focus on like dreams and visions and you know, all these different like all these like revelations that God showed me and like you know like Holy Ghost came came upon me and just some weird stuff. Um, so I, I kind of cover that, um, and then I cover another one. The next chapter is this is the Seven Mountains of Madness, and th- th- this is a new movement that's it's really spiking up. And for those who have never looked into it. Look into it. It's called the NAR, and it's the New Apostolic Reformation, and it's it's catching on like a wildfire. A lot of the a lot of the charismatic Pentecostal churches are turning into this, and it's basically they're essentially preaching the kingdom. Which I mean, again, that's Catholicism, but they're saying they're saying okay, you know, you know, the church has to bring in the kingdom. We we have to bring in like seven pillars of what what are those seven pillars? Um, no, that's not important. But there's like certain things they have to control all seven, and then Christ can show up. So they they personally go after like the governments and and and, and the leadership, and they try to like convert you know, convert them, and so that they bring revival to the nation and all this other weird stuff. It's um, a lot of conservative youth are messed up in this. If you talk to them, there it's a lot of conservatives. They're like really messed up in it. But yeah, again, they they have a whole system of like apostles, you know. Like the like self appointed. I'm a I'm an apostle now, and they they've all and, and they've all got all they can they can heal and they can even raise people from the dead. You know, just you know, just you know, no one saw them do it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? What's the standard? I think it's after you make your first ten million dollars and you become an apostle automatically or something like I don't know. It's something crazy like that. <laughs> you, 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 might as well be. Yeah. Um. You know. So I just I just discuss why the kingdom gospel is not for today. Um. And then I some like some like their weird stuff like they got they have a thing called like zo, a, 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 what's it like a, a sozo prayer like that's like really weird they start going to like weird convulsions and and you know, and, I, and I bring that up too because I I was I used to be a big fanboy in the whole in the whole like necromancy world and there is a thing called you know called the zozo and what the what these sozo prayers claim to be healing from is, is exactly what what this zozo does you know. And it's like yeah, that, yeah, that's not a coincidence, folks. You know, um, like I just, I just, I cover that. Uh, I cover you know people, uh, people like uh, what's his face, Bill Johnson. Uh, you did a, you, you did a really good video exposing that guy. I mean, that guy. 
I mean, and, and I will assist by Bill Johnson. I mean, you know, not, not, there's people that, like, even they don't want to be associated with, with Bill Johnson because Bill Johnson, I mean, he really is, like, just so off in left field teaching some weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, well, I mean, he, I mean, he actually has, like, quote-unquote Christian tarot cards. That, that like that they sell and you can like pull out a tarot card and here's your fortune you know <laughs> yeah they weren't weren't they the ones that were doing the uh grave soaking or something like that too like they you go and lay on the grave of some great christian or something and you get the something i believe i believe that's i believe that's them yeah oh no they've got stuff like too like the glory clouds like again like if you study in scripture like, like the glory of the lord i have a i have a study on that describing what, like what it is they have a weird perverted idea that and i'm not even joking there's a video that's online at their bethel church they literally put gold glitter in the air ducts it's coming down and they, they put a spotlight on it with a fan they go the glory of the lord is in the building <laughs> it's like uh yeah you yeah. know Try more like a Walmart craft department glitter. Yeah. Not the glory of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Dollar uh, <laughs> And you know, and I and I, I briefly covered like the their their approved Bible translation, the Passion translation. I've got a thing on my channel if you want to, if, 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 if anyone's never seen it. Um yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my favorite part was the thing that he's in heaven and and then the Lord, he looks and he sees a couple more books of the book of John, you know, uh, or chapters, excuse me, more chapters of the book of John. John 22. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and just like, yeah. But I mean, you know, that's the NAR. And then it, his translation, because again, I, like I said, this, or this friend who went to this, uh, this you know, this weird, this, this ridiculous church building was preaching out of this stupid thing. They're actually preaching out of it, you know. And I and I gave I gave like what this guy this guy's Brian Simmons who who is a quote unquote apostle who's raised people from the dead and he's healed people and all our stuff and he I gave his thing what he what he wrote for chapter for chapter ten verses nine to thirteen it's a complete joke like makes no sense um, and so yeah I, I I put that in there and so yeah they're they're messed up then I get into the next chapter um, cha ching. <laughs> Which is um, all these all these like word of faith preachers, and um, I I kind of briefly give like the like the origins of that. They came from like a, a man named like Phineas Quimby, and then which he eventually taught. He would go on to teach um 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 what's it a uh, new thought, which teaches the the infinite intelligence or God is everywhere. Spirit is the totality of real things. True human selfhood is divine. Divine thought is a force for good. Sickness originates in the mind, and right thinking has a healing effect. And now, if you watch a lot of these Word of Faith preachers and you buy their books, that's kind of what you're going to get to a certain degree. It's veiled under the Christian veneer, but it's there because again, eventually, the the famous Mary Baker Eddy, who formed Christian science, Christian Science, uh, took that, and then and then and then it, then it went through people like E. W. Kenyon. Um, who studied under Charles Emerson, a Christian scientist, R.W. Trine, a Gnostic, and M.J. Savage, a, a Unitarian, which which he knowingly knew these people, and he, and he knew they were heretical, but he went to them anyway and really messed them up. And then I go from there, and so then I actually named some of these people like you know, people like Kenneth Copeland, Billy Graham, Benny Hinn, Fred Price, T.D. Jakes, Paula White, you know, a lot of these. Basically, anybody you see on TV or, or, or like you see their book, that's them, you know, you know, within reason. And I discuss like, all their fake healings, like you know, like Benny Hinn's stuff. You get up there, and he's got people up there. They're like, you know, like they're like just, just like flopping like a fish, and mm -hmm. which is it's just it's sick when you see it. Um, it, it really is just disgusting. But I mean, it's it's also just so fake. He's got people up there on, on stage, he's like feel the power of God. <laughs> you know, and they all fall over, over like dominoes. It's just like, it's like, what are you like some kung fu master now? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just weird. And, and I, I, I give a footnote to this because there's this, uh, there's a famous like illusionist. He's, he's not saved or none. He's just, just a secular guy. His name's Darren Brown. And he actually took a rant. I don't, I don't know if Brian, I don't know if you've seen these. Have you seen these? Mm -hmm. And for the, I'm gonna say, I, everyone, if you've never seen them, check, check them out. He takes this random guy off the street and literally teaches dresses him up, gave him a fake testimony, and actually taught him 
how to heal. And he actually got him, actually got him up like on stage with a with a legitimate crowd and actually healed people. You know, and 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 they did it not to just, you know be deceptive and just lie to them. No, and they were showing people like, no, look, these guys are complete fakes. They're stealing your money. They're 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 ultimately killing you because they were like, look, you need real help. You know, not these hucksters. You know, and, and it's and it's a shame because the Bible says you know God can and He will heal you. So the problem is you, you don't got to go through some some middleman and pay him all this money to do so, and it's it's just disgusting. You know. Yeah, and, and and I I give the quotes for some of these guys, and again, I'm sure that Brian, when you read some of these quotes, I, I imagine those appalled you. Um, some of the quotes these guys were saying, just like there's one from like um, Paul Crouch. He actually tells people, I'm just paraphrasing that, like if, if you got a sick child, don't go to Jesus in prayer. You got to send money to you know you know you know you know into TBN, and then then the child will be well. And that, then that's just again, you know, I'm not, I don't say this about everybody. That's just the kind of stuff I'm just like, man, you ought to be publicly executed for just stealing people's money. Yeah, you know, what I mean, I mean, I mean, is that a fair thing to say? I mean, you're, you're stealing people's money. You sent how many people to hell? You know, it's uh. yeah, yeah. But you know, that's what the purpose of the whole easy believism thing is. Well, you know, like you said, it's not really. You know, gospel is simple, but. You know the quick prayerism, the whole thing there. Um, hey, you know, it's a, it's a religion is a, is a great cover for sin. Yeah, that's, that's all there is to it. And these guys couldn't get away with it if they were in any other system or whatever else. Um, but the, uh, you know, um, I don't know. It's just you get you get. You see how bad it is, you know. You see Kenneth Copeland flying by in his twenty-six million dollar jet, and the people are cheering. Yay! And you think, how can these people be this stupid? You know? Yeah. I just, you don't get it, you know. I just. Well, and, and it's funny you mentioned Kenneth Copeland because you know, I have a direct quote from the guy, and he, I mean, he literally, he 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 literally says that you know, supposedly you know, God talked to him, and he literally said that if it was him. Back in the time of Christ, Kenneth Copeland, he himself could have died on the cross and paid for our sin. I mean, he's, he, I have the quote where he says this. And mm -hmm. it's like, and that's just the, and see, that's the mindset. I mean, you know, that right there is pure narcissistic self righteousness at its core. You know, to think that to, the mindset of where, okay, I can do it too. Now, 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 at least Copeland's being honest about what he thinks. It's extremely satanic, but he's at least being honest. You got these other guys that pretend like, oh, you know, it's just, and they they try to like hide their works. And like, if you're working for your salvation, then then you're basically saying Christ's death on the cross was not sufficient enough. You got to kind of put something else there. Do your part, you know. Yep. No, you don't. That's no, you, you you do it. And if you are, you're not saved. Simple. Yep. So we'll go on to the next one here, section four, free grace. Oh boy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so with this one, I, I kind of go back to the whole easy believes in thing, but now uh, we go a little farther than just the, the quick prayer thing. Now, now, now the quick prayer people will agree with these people on most of the points like repentance and the issue of, of, the, of the new birth. They'll usually agree with them there, but usually the, the big dividing line is the no prayer. And um, so I discuss this whole thing, and I, I actually do discuss why free grace is a work. You know, I mean, the, the teaching is it's, it really is a work because they're saying, I'm saved by my faith, my belief, you know, I took salvation, you know. Yeah, it's like, sola fide. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and so the, I, the way I see it, um, and I'm not saying this is the exact way or something, but this is the way I, I, I see it as, there are three groups among this. Obviously, you, you have like your, your your prayer people that, that do take prayer, but then you actually have the three groups of non-prayer people, and that's what and, the, and that's crossless, the vampires, and the marshmallows. <laughs> and um, the crossless people, is, th that one, I mean, just if you believe that, you got you got some major issues with you. Um, but that's the thing started by um, Zane C. Hodges and um, what's what's the other guy? 
um, Robert Wilkins, um, they will tell you that you don't even have you don't even have to understand his death on the cross. You just gotta understand that some guy named Jesus, because again, because again, you don't you don't have to know his God either. You don't have you don't you don't have to know his Lord. You just gotta know if you were if you were to hear this and, and, and this is all you heard, you heard a guy named Jesus and he promised you eternal life or promises you salvation that you can't lose it, you can be saved. That's it. And it's like, what? You know, it's just I mean, it's just so ridiculous. But I now to now that being said, to, now, to the free grace credit. Not everyone believes what he believes. I and I, I point that out again. Wilkins does not; he is not the end all be all to all free grace. But what a lot of these guys won't tell you among the free grace is that they still get a lot in a lot of their teachings and foundations from his ministry. You know, they just they won't tell you that part. But mm -hmm. then I get into the, the the vampires, as I like to call them. Um, these are our um, <clears throat> best friends that have uh, loved a. Uh, Obsess over us. <laughs> yeah. Well, we won't name names because we, we don't want to give them too much attention now for their for their narcissistic selves. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but they no they they do recognize you have to preach the gospel, but they throw in that little additional clause. You got a faith in the blood, you know. And um, yeah, <laughs> I cover that. No, uh, and then just my funny name of the marshmallows. They're kind of like in between. They they preach. You know, they preach the cross, but it's just kind of like this, okay, whatever, you know, God loves you, whatever, and this the typical junk you see in, you know, the average church building, basically. You know, I, I name some of the names, and, uh, you know, and ironically, a lot of these names, they're all online. Wonder why, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm serious, Brian, I'll ask you, have you actually encountered one of these no prayer people in real life? Or is no. it just been, uh, Yeah, exactly, thank you. Thank you. No. I, have never, I have never encountered one. Face to no. face, and I probably never will. <laughs> no, you never will. They're just, you know, they have their life. Yeah. They just get online and they just try to uh, go after real ministries. Yeah. Well, you know, and the, well, the thing is too. I mean, it's, it's, it's just. Well, again, if their salvation, like they say, is just believe, then it's it's almost kind of like the like again like that that Calvinistic thing of okay, well, why preach the gospel anymore? Mm -hmm. It's not really just again, who, get, who doesn't believe? Yeah. Even if you want to attach like some works into it, a lot of times they again they've even made this accusation about you know some of these guys about us, you know they'll they'll you know they'll affirm you know like okay the you know the gospel that you're preaching, but then they'll say you're you're still adding to it, but they'll still treat you kind of like you're saved or something. You're just adding to it, you know. It's just so again, if everyone if salvation is just believe again, Roman Catholic believes, Protestants believe, Charismatics believe, they're not saved. There's even some atheists. You ask them what the go they'll they'll tell you what the gospel is. You know. Yeah. They're not saved. You know. But then I I, I discuss their weird view and repentance. They say it's a change of mind of unbelief to belief. Nonsense. And 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 I show proof that they they have they have tampered with it. I show I show I'm like an old hymn. Um, the, the old account was settled long ago. And I sh I show it. The old one, where it says I repent of all your sin. And then the new one changes to say, "Trust Lord, be cleansed of all sin, be all your sin." Well, those are two different things, you know. So this whole thing, the whole thing of, of, of so again, when we say we, when we say repent of sins, we're not meaning stop sinning like the Lord, like the Lordship crowd. No, 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 no. We're just saying you come to the end of your self righteousness, saying you're done with that life. You don't want that life of sin anymore. Now, now you're still gonna sin. I want to deny that, but. Right. So I give the, the scriptures in that because again they have this other change of life. All the scriptures there. Um, let's see here. And let me just say this, just interject yeah. a thought here, and that is, a lot of people don't understand the purpose of exposing a lot of this false stuff. It, by exposing the the lies and the falsehood, you're actually learning the truth, the sure. reality of it. You know of of okay, this is this is wrong here, and like you said, you you're showing the scriptures why it's wrong and showing the truth as a result you know that's why you have to expose false teachers yep no it's a lot of scripture from that yeah and it's a great it's, it's a great teaching method you know? Mm -hmm. you know again even even like peter ruckman's commentaries he's always constantly naming people like what they're saying and he uses that as an example of like, okay no this is why what they're saying is wrong because you're you're, you're probably going to encounter this you know 
And again, it's important. Again, and so, and I, I even name someone's a person's name here, um, and I give an example of exactly what this, what of how these people act. They come on here, and I show, I, I give the footnote and everything. They come on here, they act like, oh, I'm involved in sin, and I don't care. I'm just gonna keep doing it. And see, and that, that's not what we're saying. It's and see, that's the issue. We're not saying you're. Ever, we're not saying. We're not saying they. They. They're not going to stop sinning. The issue is though is okay. What is your attitude towards it? You got this nonchalant, don't care attitude. That's a huge problem. That doesn't necessarily mean you're lost. You can be just really carnal, which happens. But these people though, they just, they just don't have any like any any thought about it. They have no like, no fear of God. Yeah, you're not saved because it's just you just let it all hang out there. And, yeah. and and that and that's why I make a big point of saying this. The free grace thing, I call it I call it a philosophy, because the free grace movement in itself is whole no prayer thing. Think about it again. Like you said, you don't see them on the streets. You don't see them, you you don't see them in the church buildings. It's all on the internet. It's this really isolated thing. But that philosophy has taken over all these church buildings to where they have the idea. Okay, I prayed the prayer, or I just I say I'm a Christian, therefore I am. But then then the work starts showing up because. A lot of those guys still, even they know, I'm not quite sure if I have assurance yet, you know. And so they start putting the work to it. Um, so I do cover that. And then um, a couple other quick comments there, you know. You know even I just want to add a comment real quickly here. Um, Trunk87 says, uh, sorry, guys, I joined halfway through. What's the book being reviewed, please, and the author? Well, the author is Brother Jacob here that's speaking. And this Hi. is the book right here. Okay, the Romans 10 controversy. Um, so I just wanted to say that because we haven't really said the name of the book here in a little bit. So oh. <laughs> those who just are tuning in, that's the name of the book. And Brother Jacob's the author. But right. continue <laughs> on the next one. Um, well, I want to bring up one more point because I know this has happened to you a few times with like the with, 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 with like the Stephen Anderson crowd and some other people. They'll, they'll give you this idea of like, okay, you're teaching works. And you ask, okay, so, okay, so what do I got to do to be saved then if I'm not saved? Just believe. Oh, I do that already. Okay, yeah. well, stop preaching works. It's like, well, isn't that a work? You know? Yeah. This, yeah. You know, and that happens so often with these guys. It's, yep. They'll say you're you're backloading works into salvation. <laughs> yeah. That's a funny little thing that they say. Yeah. Yeah, they, they've got like little terminologies they make up. But then I actually go through, I have eight different arguments I cover on the no prayer issue. And you have to. And I will say this, and I did not cover every single, because I've heard more than just the eight I gave. But the other ones that I didn't bring up there, they are so stupid. I mean, it's just like, they're like, they're like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's no way that even makes sense. Um, but the first one I cover is Romans 10 is not the gospel. Now, that one kind of carries over into a lot of other things, but one of the first things they try to get you away from that is they say, oh, it can't be the gospel. I give the scripture showing that it is, you know, just like with it again, like just within the context, it calls itself the gospel. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's the thing about these free grace guys, they will, they they will, they will tell you you're not paying attention to, to, to the context when they themselves don't even like pay attention to any context whatsoever to anything they quote. It's so funny. And the next one is kind of like this. Is like is, is like the hyper dispensational kind of thing where they say Romans nine through eleven is not for today. It's for the Jews. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's again it's yes it's written about the Jews to the church, you know. And I and I I, I footnote to uh, again uh, you know Dr. Peter S. Ruckman's book uh, Bible Numerics. The number ten is the number of a Gentile, you know. And again, look it up. It, ten it, it always is a Gentile. Genesis ten ten Romans ten ten. So my Gentiles. So then Romans, or uh, Revelation, sorry, Revelation 10.10, 10, they go to Romans, hey, Romans 10.10 10 gives you the greatest, greatest chapter on Gentile salvation. <laughs> you know? It's yeah. just, because I mean, I'll say this to this whole thing, it's just common sense. And like I said, I was telling people this stuff, they all had, they all had that same look of like, no prayer. Because <laughs> it just, it doesn't make any sense. Like it's just, the, the idea of you wanting to be saved, but then you take it for yourself makes zero sense. I mean, obviously. The number three is the, the famous one: prayer is a walk. You know, <laughs> yeah. and uh, that's stupid stuff. Um, and I give you know, okay, no, it's not. You know, um, and uh, there's a there's a thing because I give the idea where they 
they, they have they have they have this idea of like okay like see like like salvation is a free gift and you don't ask for a free gift <laughs> it makes like no sense and i get i give an example it's like okay see see you see a homeless guy in the street and you want to give him food um so apparently so it's a free gift you you freely gave him a gift you know what i mean that doesn't make it that's not a work because he asked for it you know what i mean or say right. again, or even when again take santa claus he's not real obviously but i'm just using an example we, we all know of when you want something for christmas you you sat on santa's lap and you said i want this you asked him for a gift and you woke up christmas morning it was there you know mm -hmm. that like, that's not working for it like you don't it, you you don't just believe in santa claus and then therefore you got what you wanted you know yeah like, yeah you know. If if you have an emergency, you call nine one one because you believe they will help you. Exactly. You know, it's, you don't just sit there and just look at the wall and say, "I believe that they're coming." Don't worry, they'll be here soon. You know, you yeah. call. Yeah, it's just it's just common sense. Well, and, and I give the example too. Again, I should I said I should try that logic when I go to the bank next time. You know, mm -hmm. I don't need to ask the teller to get my money. I'll just walk behind the counter and grab it. Yeah. Yeah. See how far you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say that they're, it's, it's, I'm saying they're they're proving that they're self righteous. You no, know, that's all they're doing. You're you are stealing. It's, it, it, that's why I said I said I said I said free grace is only free because they stole it. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's what it is. Um, number four is a, is call means believe. <laughs> yeah. Now for those who are just tuning in, uh, we did a live stream I did with you and, and with brother Jeremy, brother Tim, on a on this. Um, fool named robert breaker and um because and i i isolated him because he's got like the biggest he's got a ton of subscribers and he has this weird idea that call doesn't mean ask you don't ask god to save you and but call really means believe it means from the heart you know it's just nonsense and i i, I explained like for, again from the dictionary and from scriptures it call means ask people you know um and that's what you do and i even have a quote where he actually says the idea of you confessing you know to god to be saved he actually calls it a catholic doctrine yeah. it's like stupid i mean i can say a lot about him but I, I i footnoted that video i did showing his uh just all his great expose and his just his wonderful preaching you know yeah you know you know but he's not a liar he's not he's not a date setter mm -hmm. but you know paul is yeah <laughs> it's just it's so dumb. And so then we move into the I call like the the big three. These are like the these are like the three big ones you'll probably hear. And this one is people receive the Holy Ghost without calling. And they'll pull out passages and like in the Book of Acts where people okay see people look it's just trusting. You, did you see calling here? You know. And I, I answer that. Um, again, this more nonsense. Number six, this, uh, um, the, this one here, this one here always cracks me up. The one, uh, God does not hear the prayers of lost people. <laughs> that one always makes me laugh. And they will, and they will so proudly quote John 9, 31. It's like, and they, they're so blind to the fact, like, you know, there's, again, well, guess, well, again, again, you have to rightly divide, which is a concept they miss, but um, a sinner under the Old Testament is different than a sinner now. Um because they were trying to accuse Jesus of being a sinner because he broke the Sabbath day, you know? That's the whole context of the thing there. He's not a sinner. You can God will certainly hear people if you come to him in that right state. You won't hear you if you're just coming in your own self-righteousness. Well, yeah, obviously you won't hear those prayers. And obviously and obviously if you've never if you've never been truly saved, well, okay, well, you, okay, well, you can't just start, you know, praying to talk to him. You, you, well, you can't do that. That doesn't work. But God will certainly hear you. And I give examples of that again. Explain Cornelius you know, he was praying, and the and the and the, and the angel of the Lord heard him and and visited him. You know, so it's just. Then I got another one here, the the, the in versus on, and that. <laughs> um, and so that's another one. Um, I discussed again because they they try what they try to do is they they will divorce verse thirteen where for it says who shall for whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. They divorce that from the entire context and they lump it into, into the next part where they say verse 14. How should they call on whom they've not believed, you know? And so they say, no, see, the, the believing precedes the call 
And but see, but see that belief there is when you get saved, and then and then that 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 call there is the prayer of a saved man. It's like, uh, no, <laughs> no. And I explain why. And again, and, and again, there's a difference between the wording in there. There's a believe in, and there's a believe on. And if you don't believe me too, for more confirmation, I remember uh, Ruckman actually wrote something about that too. You know, so I, so again, so this isn't some like, crazy thing I came up with. Even Ruckman was saying this. He said it in like on his commentary on the Book of Acts. Because again, there is a difference depending on the thing. You have to look at the, you know, again, it's it's, it's called prepositions. You know, you can't just you know pull a thing out and go, oh, see here it is. And again, and, and I show from the new versions. The new versions tamper with that on purpose. You know, it's mm -hmm. not an accident. And then I, I even give a quote from Wilkins himself where he actually calls salvation intellectual ascent. So you just intellect. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's just all up here, just facts. He actually, and he actually says it. And and then I get into like the the like the miscellaneous stuff. They say they was like only save people call. <laughs> like yeah, okay. And then the oh that oh then the other one, I, I love this one too. Where they say um they they say what about mute people? Uh huh. <laughs> I, 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 I I I see people always give you that one. I'm just like come on you know. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. but I give a scripture that debunks that one. So that's that. Um, but then we go into section five, and that is when I okay. Now we've covered all the the cesspool of heresy. Here's salvation for you. You know, here it is, plain as day. I I allude to it all throughout the book, but now I make it clear, and I get into the thing of repentance, and I explain what repentance is, and then that's on page one forty eight where I start. I I, I said it's the heart and the matter, and I, and I discuss the thing of repentance, what it really is, because again, repentance is one of the things like everyone misses. And that's why people don't get saved. People get the A B C part, but they don't. They the, the repentance is is within the A of the immense of a sinner, and everyone misses that part all the time. And so I take a, that. Then this is like the longest part of my book where I explain what repentance is, and just to again briefly explain it again. We've said in other videos, but I lay it out in the scriptures again. It's it comes from a, a conviction in the heart. It comes from the heart. Um, it, you know, it's contrition, and then. Again, it, it's a it's a godly soul over your sins and who you are, and, and, it's, and it's not just a and, and and that's why I said too, it can't happen in the mind. The mind can't have sorrow, just headaches. You know, it has to happen in your heart. Um, and then then I, I compare and contrast the idea of of the sorrow of the world versus sorrow of of, of a true godly one. Because you can cause you can be sad and cry and cry tears every weekend, but I, I don't save you. That does not save you. But um. But then there's people that, that know they actually truly are broken. And I give, again, comparisons in Scripture for that. Um, and then, well, again, because then, then I said, I said, I said also, even just repentance is not just sorrow over sins. It is sorrow over what you are. Because that's the thing. It's not just sorrow, okay, yeah, I did this, I did that. Well, yeah, that, that's there. But it's over who you are as, as, as an individual. You know, you know Job 4, 2, verse 6, I abhor myself in dust and ashes. It's yourself. Because again, if you read, again, in Joel, we read the context. He got really proud and self-righteous, but he didn't say, and he he was repentant of all the things he was saying and doing. He repented of what he is, because that's who we are as man. We're sinners, you know. We're just we're naturally wicked, and that's what he repented of. And that's and people people miss it all the time. Um. Again, um, I explained that again. You have to you have to come to that understanding of this. The idea of you again, you have to understand that like, you are the chiefest of sinner. There's not, there's not this. Well, I'm a sinner, but you know, I didn't kill nobody, I didn't rob a bank type of a deal. No, no. What about all your things, individual things you have done, all that? Then, then I, I discuss how it's an actual turn from your sins, not to stop sinning. And I, I make that clear in this chapter. I've already said another chapter is you do not stop sinning. That works. <laughs> okay. What I'm saying though, again, I give um, Acts 26. Verses 18 through 20, 18 to 20, you know, it, you know, it's, it's to open your eyes and turn it from darkness to light. You're turning, you know, it, again, you know, verse 20 that you know, is, I have here, you know, that they should repent and turn to God, you know, it's a turn. And um, I give the scripture for that, what that, that occurs and how you turn from that. You turn from like, from like your, like I, you turn from like your um, 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 idolatry. You turn from yourself, trusting yourself and men, um, and again, I get, I get, I say, I, I, I say, I say, repentance is a turn from from personal individual sins. Again, not stop sinning, but you understand 
I have done wickedness. And you got to say, I don't want this life anymore. Now, will you still sin? Will you still even willingly sin? Sure. We ask anyone else. We will never deny that. Right. But just you, you want to, you, you, that mindset that you no, I'm done. I don't want that. Um, the life anymore. And um, it can, cause again, it's what I, I gave the scripture against what Jesus said, because um, John 3, 19, and this is the condemnation that the light is coming in the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And that's what Paul said to turn from, to turn them from, from darkness to light, you know? And, that, and that's the reason why people don't get saved because they love their sin. They have a sin. It could, it could be just one sin, but they hold on to it. And that's the issue. And that's, and that's why people do not get saved. And so then I, I go through and I explain some more scriptures, but I, I plainly state what it is. It's living I have stated, let me plainly and simply spell what repentance that leads to salvation is repentance to be saved is a godly soul over what you are. And when you repent, you repent of everything. What you are, a sinner, what you have done, your sins, and your rejection of Jesus Christ, your unbelief. It is that simple. You stop trusting the world's way of thinking, the Pope, the Reverend, your church attendance, your good moral deeds, the news media, the textbooks, the government, the philosophers, the science, you know, the scientists, the, the, the gossip magazines, your horoscopes, your tarot cards, the banks, the insurance companies, mythologies, the superheroes, your wealth, false religions, your favorite sports team, your favorite athlete, your favorite band, your favorite actor, and most importantly, you stop trusting yourself, your way of thinking, and your actions. You put 1% faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ, or the Lord Jesus, knowing what he did for you. And then, and then, and then I, I kind of piggyback real quickly. I, I kind of cover why some of the other errors or pens were, again, among lordship and free grace, where they go off wrong again. But then I tie it all back into salvation. I put it right in that little plan of salvation, and there it is. Very simple. And I, I ended on Romans 10, again, because it brings you back full circle. Then And then the last part of the book, I just had a closing thoughts. I just... I explained if you if you pay attention to the book, there are three core main ideas. But that, that's why people get it all wrong, because of one tradition philosophy gets thrown in there. They, if you add stuff to the scriptures, which, which leads to the next part, you add to the word of God, which is you, you change the word of God, and I give a scripture on that, and then it all leads to your self righteousness. You know, right, back, right back to Romans ten, and that's the issue. People are lost because they're, of their self righteousness, and that's the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. And so I ended on that, showing that, and I just, again, I, I quickly, it's like, hey, salvation's going to be simpler. Check it out. And uh, I, I leave one quick little page at the end, just how to be saved. Just quick little thing. There it is. And so um, that's the book, The Romans 10 Controversy. And so I guess it's, I think it'd be really good. Like, I, I think it's really good, like evangelistic book to hand out people. I, I One brother actually contacted me, said he actually was, was going to buy more of these and actually, you know, go out and start, you know, you know, you give them out to people as like as like gospel tracks, and so you know, hey, praise the Lord, that's that's amazing, and um, so and I really do hope with this book that people would actually understand what salvation is, and people would actually get saved by it by looking at the big, you know, all the things why it's wrong, and then go, okay, um, this isn't salvation, but here it is though, and like I said, like you said, I wanted to keep it very simple, and so mm -hmm. that's the book. So if you have any other things you want to ask me or discuss, let me know. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of funny because one of the big things in my ministry over the years has been, um, you know, I, I guess things the Lord convicted me about or whatever. Uh, and that is, what was I looking for back as a lost man that nobody was providing? And then yeah. kind of like, well, okay, that's what I want you to do right now. And, you know, this book here, you know, if you could have read a book like this as a young man, Think of how much trouble it would have saved you, you know. <laughs> and so, Lord inspires you to write something like that, so that you can give it to other people and say, "Okay, these are the answers I didn't have back when I was searching for them. Mm -hmm. God helped me write this. There you go." Sure. And yes. uh, that's that's really the thing I I thought when I read your book. I thought, you know, because I mean, I went I went through this back. You know, I was going through a lot of this stuff. You know, the false gospel type of things and whatever else many, many years ago and uh, going to different Baptist churches and going, you know, I mean, I was raised in church buildings and there was just so much weird stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like, this person saying that and that person saying this, and it's contradicting and you're thinking, what in the world, you know, doesn't really make any sense. And, and that's why I you know, really like your book, brother, because it really kind of shows the whole big picture and says, Here's the different movements and here's the truth, you know, according to the scriptures. 
And um, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. You know, it's just it's neat to see. Yeah, it's complicated when you understand the, all the different movements, but it ends with something that's just simple. You yeah. know, that's another thing that used to bug me back years ago when I was studying, you know, before I got into ministry. A lot of times it was these exposés on false whatever, but then they don't, they don't really give you the truth. Yeah. And I, you know, I think, yeah. Okay, well, what is the truth? You know? Yeah. That's that's the I I never like that either. It's always you know, and, and I'll give again a bit of my quick little testimony for those who don't know. I mean, you know, I was involved in a lot of just, you know, very wicked, you know, sins and I mean, I, I'm just trying to be quick about this again. I, I, I practically live my life like like as an atheist. I just I, I was a Christian, therefore I am, you know, just because I was basically told. And I was just like, Okay. And I went on through life and I just got older and then things were, you know, again because I had you know, things in my life were just trying to fall apart from, from family to from school because I had dedicated a lot to my you know, ac you know academics and sports and that just was tanking, um, and I was just feeling miserable and I was looking ahead at life because I was I was seeing my future, like so many kids do again and that's part of the reason why suicide among among the youth has gone up like crazy because they're looking at their future because again my generation has been handed the has been handed over over the kitchen sink. And that's all we've known is just everything thrown at us. And then we get older. It's like that life has nothing more to offer anymore. Now all we're going to do is just be sitting around behind some desk for the rest of our life and do nothing. And, and, and I saw that and I was just like, I, I this is my life. This is going to be my life. And I don't want that anymore. And I was still self-righteous. And again, I went through the whole thing of just, you know, trying to find the truth. And that was my problem. Okay. I thought, cause again, I knew, you know, I knew I knew Christianity was true. I knew God was real. I knew that was because I I did have that influence throughout throughout my entire life. You know, I still had that there, but I still live like an atheist, or whatever. But that was always there, and so I knew by looking at stuff like Islam and stuff, it, and other religions, I knew they weren't false. I knew it was ridiculous. I knew the corruption among the church buildings. I never went to one, but I knew it existed because I had because I've been some of that stuff. I saw it firsthand when I would go there friends and family that you know talk about it. i knew firsthand what it was i didn't really want, really want that either you know and so i went kind of down the whole self-righteous path of just trying to you know find the truth you know so once i find find this truth and now i can properly worship you know because you know my life just felt dead and trying to pray to you know pray to god and I, nothing was getting answered and just, i just felt lonely and miserable and i was at the point where it's like if i can't find this tr the truth i'm gonna kill myself i made that point clear I'm done with it, and and so I went up for a while, and I, I thought I found it a few times because I because you know, I got like those warm fuzzy feelings. I started getting like those like visions and dreams, and you know, but still, some it's just some was still missing. I still didn't get it. I still felt weird, and then just one night I was just tired of it all because again I was watching because again when I was doing my studies, I kept getting put left and right and here and there to all these different religions and groups and i was just so confused this contradicts this this person says this and this and again i'd see like, i'd see like the same scriptures and people would just be like saying all these different things about it i'm just like what you know how can he say that and i'm just so confused you know just i'm like this is a joke like there and i, and I was like there's got to be truth out there there's got to be you know what i mean because i i can look around i can look at myself and i go there's truth here you know what i mean just where is it and one night i finally just i had enough i broke down on my bed at night, I was, you know, I was 15, um, around late July. I don't remember the date, but it was around late July, maybe, maybe very early August. Um, around that time, and I just broke down, just weeping, just, just like a little baby. And I was just like, Lord, and I, and I prayed the first time, he truly, just like, again, I was never told, pray the prayer, or I just, it just happened naturally. Because that's all I was left. Because I, because the thing is, I kept trying to find the truth without Jesus Christ. And then I can worship, but then not realizing, no, Jesus Christ is the truth. He's been in front of me the entire time. I, I was just dodging him because I didn't want to, because I didn't want to see myself for who I really was. But I broke down. I was like, and I, and I, and I pray this. this is what I prayed, not knowing the scriptures. I said, I said, Lord, I just, I just want the truth. Nothing but the truth. I said, just show me the way there. And I, and I, I said, all I want to do is just live a life pleasing in your sight. And I never heard of John 14, 6. Never heard of it. And, that, and that's what I prayed for. And now he gave it to me and I can say, and anyone knows me knows my life 
it did a 360 or well, well a 180 <laughs> um yeah. it 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 completely changed again i was just a you know long hair just a foul mouth just i mean ugh. my my pride was immense just terrible and um i mean just very, very bad just very arrogant just uh i was just rude to all my friends i was just very perverted I had a very perverted mind and very the things i did i won't discuss all that here but you know you get the idea just very wicked and um and just my life just changed and again out of the years that i've been saved i mean i have grown so much to the point where i mean i've now been able to you know share what i've learned and just make it simple as i can again all glory goes to god for this this, this had nothing to do with me and that's and that's why again why i wanted to do the book it's like people it's it's so easy it's so easy the hard part is coming is is on your end are you gonna you know you know just fall down and say you're right you know i'm I, i'm wrong i, I can't do it mm -hmm. most people they won't do that and that's and that's yep. just the sad part is and, and that's the parts again i sometimes i can't understand because then i got saved it's such like a at like an early age i'm like you people, how can you go your entire life? Like, aren't you tired of it? It's like, it's right there in front of you. You know, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it's a shame, but I'm just, you're just trying to, you know, reach people that want to hear it. They have a desire like me. And I, I've met, again, I've met those people. But again, when I got saved again, um, going through, you know, go, go, going through high school, I had, um, you know, the, you know the, the blessing to be put in front of people that are going through the same thing as I was. They just, they had, they had, they had no truth. They just kind of gone through like this, this system and they don't know what to believe. And, and they're just kind of like, I, I don't really, I don't really have a belief, you know, kind of a thing. And kind of like how I was in many ways. And I had the opportunity to sit them down and say, look, here's the, here's the gospel. You know, here's some gospel tracks and tell them from the scripture, what the Bible says. You, you don't got to go through the whole organized thing. It just, here's what it is. I mean, I remember the one time the Lord did just a works, an amazing thing for me. I was just sitting at our school library, just literally just sitting there, just, just read my Bible. And like just and it, it was lunchtime. And so people start filling in and there's like no other seats left. And I, I'm not kidding. The Lord worked this is so amazing. He brought a Muslim, a Mormon, and an atheist all at once, sat them right down in front of me. They've never heard the gospel. And I got a chance just to witness to him and show him the gospel. And you could see just the, the you know, like you know, like the, the you know, like the complete conviction in their face, you know. And and it was just amazing to actually tell them. What the scriptures say and they were like you can see they're like thinking and i mean i, I don't i mean i don't think they're saved now i haven't seen them, obviously but you could you know you, you know you know because they you know like they tried to mock it here and there and but i just kept cool I'm like no this is what scripture says i mean there is no there there is no second chance after death you know like it's you got one shot and this is it and i said salvation is just simple and i said i said i i, I said i said except you be born again you cannot see the kingdom of god you know and just and, and that was just one scenario and just an amazing thing and you know, and that's just my desire. I mean, my desires have completely just, I, I just want people like time, people, time is short, get saved. And like I said, I realize not everyone's going to do that. Obviously we know that the whole world, whole world, life and wickedness, but hopefully with this, there's just one more tool for those who really want to see the truth. Just, just plain, your salvation, simple as you can get it. Here it is, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. You know, I was thinking about something here the other day, and because uh, this is one of the big things, um, and that's the First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, versus, you know, the Romans road. And, and a lot of these people will go to First Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, to make it yeah. teach their version of the gospel. And yeah. you know, the, the infamous vampire one, you know, the, the blood thing, and, they, and they'll say, First <laughs> Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4 is the gospel. And the blood's not mentioned. They say, well, the death is there, you know. But I was thinking about something else, and I thought, you know, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, uh, yeah, that's the gospel, but it's it's kind of, Paul is kind of giving an overview of what the gospel is. And yeah. I thought, why would they always go there, but they don't want to go to the Romans road? Because, see, the Romans road, you go through that, you go through the book of Romans, and you show all the different scriptures yeah. leading to Romans chapter 10, right it's designed to dismantle self-righteousness exactly. they're none good the wages of sin is death you know while we were yet we were yet sinners christ died for us romans the book of romans is all about dismantling self-righteousness 
1 Corinthians 15, it's just kind of Christ died for our sins. Yeah. If the, the easy believers in the crowd, they say, well, yes, we can all admit to sin. Yeah, we, we've all sinned. Of course, we're all sinners. And let's just go on. Yeah. Wait a second. Where's the personal conviction? Where's the conviction coming in there? Exactly. You know? And and, and, that, and that's the point they miss when they with that. Like it's just like no, that's the point of why you, you go through that road. Okay, because you know, I briefly mentioned that in the book. I don't spend time on it, but I, I mention it because like that that's the point of it though. You you work someone through that and you show them just one thing after another. You're accountable to God. You're a sinner. You're gonna die. You have to answer to Him someday. Okay, again, it's not your ISIS. Christ Christ gives you His. It's free. You know, you know. It, it just every chapter is about that. You know, to some level working you through it and then that and that's what i'm saying that's why again romans 10 obviously like i said and that's why originally it was just with the prayer thing but then the lord kind of like had me do a salvation thing because again like i said romans 10 everything in that chapter and, and you know and and i show it in like the quick exposition there i show it how it all kind of works and ties into each other and how everything you need to know for salvation it really is just right there and, and again you know, how many people how, how many people have we really ever noticed that and i did it because again because most people like myself i just kind of like Okay, here's a passage for the you know, for the calling part. Not realizing so much. No, no, no. The whole chapter, like there it is. It's designed. That chapter is a, is a giant sum, summation of everything you just read. You mm -hmm. know, but you know, with the exception of the call point, where now now you're at the final point. You call upon his name. You know, and that's what ends off because because then because again after that chapter eleven is okay the future of Israel. It's prophecy in there, and again there, you know there, there's some things there for us too, obviously, but. Mainly the prophecy, what's going to happen? And then after that, it, go, it goes right into like, okay, the Christian walk stuff that happens now, now that you're saved. Yeah. And so that's yeah. That, that's yeah. It's it's so it's and so I'm saying it's so easy. The problem is, you, and then that's the problem. People, you have you have to just let the word of God speak. You have got you've got to pull that 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 religious baggage off it. If you don't, I don't care how how say you know how how long you've been saved, you'll never get it. And that applies again to other issues like we'll say with the Godhead issue. You know, if you don't pull off that that baggage, you will never get it. Mm -hmm. Get close and and I, again, which is again, you know, I, I don't really I don't discuss that at all in this book because again, because again, that's just an issue you figure out later. Um obviously, obviously if you if you don't believe Jesus Christ is the Lord, okay, well, yeah, you can't be saved. But <laughs> you know, yeah, right. but, but I'm saying the whole actual because again, because again, because you know, when when I got saved, my my um theology i guess you could say on on who on who god was was it was bad <laughs> but through the scriptures i mean it just you, 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 again and i guess see that's the benefit of just being by yourself with the holy spirit just teaching you yeah obviously not again i've learned from your videos but again I, and i've learned stuff through you but the best learning i've got and I, i'm sure you would agree with me is just you and the holy spirit mm -hmm. just just showing you what 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 it says about him what he's done, what he wants you to know, you know, right? Yeah, you, know, you, you learn, you learn so much more that way, mm -hmm. and that, that's just the problem. And, and people, that's um, it's like, it's a personal relationship, a true one, not the one, not the one the people in the church say because they, they, they all say it's a personal relationship. You don't mean that for one second. Mm -hmm. no. You, you got to come here every single week, and if you're not here, then ooh, you know, and then you gotta, you know, make sure you're, you're paying up on, on your dues and. This and this and that. It's like that's not a personal relationship. That that that's a that's a a, a religious one to your building. You know. Yeah, it's a corporate relationship. Yep. Corporate membership. <laughs> yeah. So tell people where they can get the book. Okay. Um. I saw some people uh, posting in the comments, but for those who haven't missed it, um, go to Lulu.com. Now, um, I I think it's easier just go to the Google search bar. Just type in Lulu books. And it should just come up, you know, like, you know, the website has, says, says lulu.com. Click on that and then go to the search bar and um, go to the search bar in, in their bookstore. Just type in Romans 10. Um, it'll come up. If that doesn't come up, then, then then type in the full name, you know, the Romans 10 controversy. Just type it in. And then, then, then it should be the first thing that comes up. You'll see the book cover, you know, with uh, this right here. You can buy it there um, and, and you can buy it for, uh, for $9.99. Um, it, it's, on, it's on very good uh, quality paper. Is uh, you know I had options because I had options to make it cheaper, but I went for a, a little more quality one because again I wanted to, you know, have like a pretty you know, good one for you for handing out to people for you for salvation. So there, so there it's there. And if you if you do have any questions about the book, 
you're more than welcome to email me. I, I give my email in here along along with my channel. Um, so if you do have questions, yeah, just email me. I will be happy to answer your question. Now, if it's no, now if you're just going to argue with me, okay, forget it. You know, but if you actually have a, like a question about something I said, I will be more than happy to answer any single question you got for me, anything at all. Um, so that's in there too, um, and so yeah. So. So um so 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 again so again uh, uh, Lulu dot com L U L U. Yep, and like I said, I you know I definitely uh, recommend the book. It's a very good book. Well, thank you. So um, I've got some other projects I'm working on. The so I'm already gonna I'm already getting on the you know on on some other books. So <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> There's definitely a need. I mean. You know, I just going into a modern Christian bookstore. I mean, there's yeah. almost nothing that I would even buy in uh, one of those places. I just go in and you just feel, I feel like vomiting. Yeah. <laughs> All this stuff. Yeah, what is this? Yeah. I, I, I was on some like Pentecostal, like, um, 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 like some like bookstore the other night. Cause I'm you know, doing research for, for, for some, other, some other stuff. And I was on some Pentecostal website. And so, you know, to buy some of the books, I had to put in my name and all that stuff. And before I did that, they actually required me to put in, put to actually put in like a title. What are you, Reverend, Pastor, Father, Bishop? And I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm none of that. I'm just, I'm just Jacob, you know? So, and so I'm just like, Mr. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you know I mean, like, come on, you know? Like, yeah. like I'm Father. <laughs> like, yeah. Kind of calls him out. We were talking earlier about Jack Kyle. Actually, somebody sent me this in the uh, in the mail. Oh, really? And thing about it actually came from the uh, Hiles Anderson um, store or whatever else the the college out there. Yeah. Like I, I'm, this, I'm going to read about him and his and the the little propaganda book here, and I'm going to all of a sudden change my mind or something. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. That's funny. So this book I recommend. This one I don't. Okay. <laughs> Just gonna say that. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyhow, so <laughs> um, I gotta get going here. Uh, not gonna be able to do any kind of question and answer thing. Um, Cause I can go for a couple hours in and right. of itself, but, uh, we have, uh, we have a lot of work that we're doing right now. So I uh, just wanted to take some time to, uh, talk about the book. Cause like I said, it's really an important book. Um, especially if you're on, you know, internet ministry and stuff, because like we've been saying, you're not going to run into this stuff offline for the most part, unless you run into one of these door to door soul winning, hyper soul winning type of people. Um, you know, I would, I, I mean, I'd recommend giving one of them a copy of this book and just saying, Hey, you know, read that, you know, yeah. you're wrong. And, um, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I guess if, if, uh, do you have anything else you want to, you want to say before we end here? Um, I think that's it, actually. Um, we've covered everything we need to really cover. And so, like I said, um, thank you all for having to tune in. And like I said, just uh, you, you know, um, give me your thoughts on it for those who haven't read it. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, I, I get my email in there, and, and I purchase on the website. Just uh, if you have anything you need to ask me about the book, go right ahead and ask me. I have no problem answering uh, any questions you got. Yeah. So that's going to be it. And uh, thank you, everybody that watched. And uh, – Check out the book, highly recommend it. So we'll see you in the next video. We'll see you.